Yeah. So it is my great pleasure to introduce the first plenary speaker of IHMTC 2021, Professor Prashant Kumar Das, who is currently Professor A.S. Davis Chair of Thermodynamics in the Department of Mechanical Engineering of IIT Kharagpur. Earlier in the same institution, he had served as Dean of Postgraduate Studies and Research. Professor Das is a well accomplished academician and needs no introduction to most of us here. His research activities encompass diverse topics of thermodynamics, thermofluids engineering. Some of his research interests are multi-phase flows and phase change heat transfer, experimental techniques, thermohydraulics of nuclear reactors, sensor developments, unique CFD techniques for single and two-phase hydrodynamics, and so on. He is also recognized as a leading expert in the country in the field of heat exchangers. Professor Das has also been a great educator in thermal engineering. He has supervised around 30 doctoral students, and he has a large team that he is guiding. Presently, there are about 20 research students working in his team. Professor Das has received numerous academic recognitions. Among the notable ones, he is a fellow of Indian National Academy of Engineering, and he is also a fellow of Indian National Academy uh, or National Academy of Sciences India, which is also called NASI. He has served as an associate editor of ASME, Journal of Heat Transfer. Professor Das has been quite versatile in thermofluids research, and he has pioneered uh, many different activities. Most recent ones, uh, currently his team is actively developing low-cost medical devices and health support system uh, to be used as import substitute. Quite recently, the Electromechanical cardiovascular replicator developed by his group has won the prestigious Gandhian Young Technological Innovation, Innovation Award. With this brief introduction, let me have the pleasure and privilege of welcoming Professor Das for the plenary lecture on flash evaporation and propagation of flashing point, the level of understanding and gray areas. Professor Das, please. Thank you, Professor Datto, for this uh, nice introduction. And uh, I uh, also thank the uh, organizing committee for, for inviting me for this, uh, for this uh, particular lecture. So I consider this as a, a rare privilege. Uh, but at the same, same time, it is not an unmixed bliss because this lecture has also been named as the memorial lecture for uh, Professor B.V. S.S.S. Prashad. And uh, all of us, we know that uh, just a few months back, it was a shocking news uh, to the heat and mass transfer community of this country. Uh, Professor, the, the news of sudden and untimely demise of uh, Professor Prashad. So Professor Prashad <coughs> was... Uh, a, a professor of uh, thermal engineering, particularly um, turbo machines in IIT Madras. He has also served in IIT Kharagpur and we spent together quite a few years as colleagues, exchanged <clears throat> academic ideas and uh, interacted for research. And in IIT Madras, he has led uh, the uh, research activities in the field of turbo machinery. He was also professionally very active in in organizing different key uh, uh, seminars, symposium, conferences, etc., in the country for heat transfer and fluid flow. Uh, he has got very good connect with the uh, industry. So his loss or his sudden demise is a loss to our community. I take this, take this point also to uh, express my um, personal loss and uh, to uh, pay my personal homage to Professor Prashad. Professor Prashad, because of our 
uh, long association. With these few words, uh, I like to go to my presentation. Uh, only one point I like to tell at this moment, the work we are, which I am going to present is the work of a PhD dissertation of Dr. Kushkumar Devangan and uh, Professor Prashad was uh, examiner for that thesis. The topic is flash evaporation and propagation of flashing front, the level of understanding and uh, the gray areas. And I have, how much time do I have? Liquid to vapor phase change is not only complex, but uh, it can be uh, due to different uh, driving factor. Uh, we have boiling, which is temperature driven. We have evaporation, where uh, there is a uh, difference of concentration of the liquid vapor, and that is the driving factor for the phase change. Then uh, we have also pressure driven. If the pressure of the system of fluid that can be made uh, uh, <clears throat> I mean, below the saturation temperature corresponding to the uh, saturation pressure corresponding to the temperature, then we can get cavitation and flashing. Both of these two phenomena, these two phenomena, thermodynamically they are they are the same. But notionally, I mean, um, technical people they make some sort of a difference between cavitation and flashing. Whereas in cavitation there is pressure recovery. In flashing, generally there is no pressure recovery. But all the processes are complex. And uh, the way boiling has been studied uh, uh, very rigorously, flashing has not been studied, though it, it has got uh, much importance in um, different fields of technology. So here we can see some of the, some of the reasons why one should uh, study uh, flashing. Flashing is needed in many of our engineering system like nebulizer and inhaler, where uh, the medicine uh, in the form of a um, of spray, it has to be evaporated so that the medicinal particulates can uh, reach the uh, deepest point of the body. And then uh, for a viscous fluid, for spray atomization, uh, <clears throat> flashing is needed. Desalination flashing is needed. For food industry, like for <clears throat> producing milk powder or egg powder, uh, we need flashing. And also in power and cooling system, there is use of flashing. Now, flashing is not always uh, desirable uh, as there is uh, production of vapor from the liquid phase and maybe that is unwanted. So there is a large generation of volume. So that gives rise to some sort of damage and catastrophic failure. Uh, so we can see uh, some damage in pipeline, valves, et cetera. Then, then there could be uh, volatile uh, liquid <clears throat> liquid evaporation, rapid evaporation, and that could be hazardous. There could be catastrophic failure due to loss of coolant accident. So one need to have a good knowledge of flashing and at the same time, a good control of flashing, both for utilizing it for benefit and for utilizing or rather preventing it uh, for creating some sort of a havoc. <clears throat> now, unfortunately, the experimental research and theoretical research what have been conducted in flashing, uh, they have revealed uh, quite a few, um, quite a few physics, quite a few important physics uh, regarding this phenomena, but there is a gap. So what I will try to do in this uh, lecture, in this presentation, we, I will like to uh, present our work which comprises of both experiment and theory. At the same time, uh, I will try to find a tale, what are the new points we could understand from the study and what are the drawbacks. And at the end, maybe I will try to summarize. <clears throat> so uh, let us understand uh, a flashing. Uh, <clears throat> Incidentally, flashing is a phenomenon which has got very rich thermodynamics, uh, fluid mechanics, and heat transfer, mass transfer is associated with this phenomenon. So uh, uh, at the beginning, we can see the usual two-phase drone of a normal liquid, of a uh, very common liquid like water. So we have got a binoidal line, which is made of uh, <coughs> saturated uh, liquid line and saturated vapor line. Uh, just after this uh, saturated liquid line and before this saturated vapor line, uh, then we have got some sort of shaded zone. This is actually metastable zone. And in between this zone 
is uh, is restricted by some other curve which is known as spinoidal curve so we have got spinoidal limit and we have got binoidal curve uh, spinoidal curve uh, gives the limit of the metastable point so in this in this region one can keep the liquid <coughs> such uh, this is a cool liquid it can come to the saturated condition and we can keep it in the superheated state uh, within the within the metastable region that means within the binoidal line and the spinoidal line on vapor side also similar thing can happen but this is a metastable state so if this is a metastable state then what happens that at any point if the disturbances are um, uh, um, high enough then there is a uh, rapid evaporation uh, to regain the thermodynamic equilibrium or <clears throat> and then part of it will be liquid and part of it will be vapor so this is a very rapid process and this process is uh, this process is known as flashing also cavitation is similar to that but cavitation as i have told that uh, application wise or technically there is slight difference between flashing and uh, uh, cavitation and uh, those differences are nominal now we we come down i mean we come to the uh, right hand side figure and here what has been shown that uh, there is a liquid column which is um, which is subcooled and at the top uh, there is let's say the uh, saturation pressure uh, and uh, somehow we suddenly reduce the pressure of the entire bulk of the liquid so then it will be superheated but though it will be superheated boiling will not start everywhere boiling will start from the free surface and then that uh, boiling front or vaporization front will go down in the downward direction um, um, mind that it is a vertical tube and here within a small region we can see flushing is taking place and then this region is moving in this in the downward direction so uh, we have got three region here we have got two phase region here we have got superheated liquid region and at this point we have got some sort of a flushing front <clears throat> which is moving in the downward direction and this is finite but a very narrow region and as the figure indicates you can see that it is um, not a flat front it can have any kind of arbitrary shape in fact its shape changes as the front propagates here uh, schematically i show the phenomenon so uh, one side we have got saturated vapor uh, but it could be vapor liquid mixture on the other uh, side we have got uh, superheated liquid and in between we have got evaporation front front which is moving in the saturated liquid so uh, this uh, region is finite but very narrow region and here we can see the pressure uh, change so within this evaporation zone there is a change in pressure otherwise on the other two side pressure remains pretty much constant then uh, density change is there then uh, the temperature change is also there and the evaporation uh, the amount of evaporation that also changes that means in the middle zone we have got high evaporation activity and uh, we do not have any evaporation on the uh, left hand side zone and in the right hand side zone and this is propagating which we call propagation of evaporation front or propagation of flushing the transition from a metastable to a stable phase occurs due to local fluctuation so here this is very important that uh, nucleation takes place and this nucleation takes place this is a postulation due to local fluctuation not much of uh, experimental evidence of course that is very difficult Uh, to find out how the nucleation takes place experimentally or not uh, uh, theoretical uh, um, a theoretical analysis has been done on the nucleation but it is assumed that due to uh, some sort of disturbance this nucleation takes place and uh, one uh, region there is nucleation then there is next region uh, again some new nucleation is there so that's how this flushing front propagates this is some sort of postulation a good model or some sort of a good visualization for this nucleation process and transport process has not emerged yet but some of the videos etc i will try to show to make this point clear nucleation at interface uh, uh, is occurring and that's how we are getting the propagation of the flushing front but 
uh, I mean, there is no way, I mean, of course, one can try um, his or her best, but uh, there is no way that you can make the side walls or the bulk of the liquid totally free from nucleation. So in the uh, flushing region, when nucleation is taking place, we call it primary nucleation just for our convenience. And there could be secondary nucleation in the wall or in the bulk of the fluid. So one has to remember that the secondary nucleation, particularly for the study of flushing, is some sort of a nuisance, and one has to uh, one has to avoid it as, as as far as possible. Now, this secondary nucleation that depends on the liquid uh, for water. Water is a very obnoxious liquid as far as the secondary nucleation is concerned. Uh, and uh, one has to make the system clean, etc. Otherwise, the secondary nucleation cannot be controlled, and flushing cannot be studied um, in, I mean, in its purest form. <clears throat> now, here again, uh, we look into a uh, little bit of uh, the thermodynamics. So, suppose this is the uh, chamber where there is a different pressure. It could be outside atmosphere also. And here we have got liquid, which is in the uh, uh, subcooled region. And then there is a diaphragm, which is making a difference between these two chambers. That means there is a pressure difference maintained by the diaphragm. Now, if the diaphragm is ruptured, that is how we uh, have this experiment in most of the laboratories. It is kind of a shock tube type experiment. Then what happens? Then <clears throat> uh, number of front we can find out. So this is the XT diagram, uh, right hand side of this XT diagram that shows uh, <clears throat> the phenomenon or the wave that is taking place on the vapor side. Then what we can see here that uh, here the pressure was high, so a compression wave will move and then a contact discontinuity, that means some sort of a liquid vapor mixture, etc., that will also move. Uh, on the other side, uh, on the left-hand side of this one, what we can find that there is an evaporation front, uh, which is flushing front, and then there is an expansion wave because top chamber was at uh, vacuum, so expansion wave that will proceed in the downward direction. Now, again, uh, that is the lack of physics, how this evaporation front and uh, this um, expansion wave uh, in fact, evaporation front follows the expansion wave, but how these two things are coupled, uh, till now we do not have uh, the physics known, how these two different fronts are coupled together. What is the relationship of velocity of propagation of these two fronts? So these are the gray areas. Uh, even with the recent experiment, etc., cetera, we, we could not find, a, I mean, any kind of clue how these two things are uh, related to each other. <clears throat> So some of the experimental investigation which we have done and got some uh, unique results or new results uh, that I like to tell. So this shows some sort of a timeline and the challenges of experiments are water is less popular due to undesired desired nucleation, but the water is very important fluid. And then effect of secondary nucleation, which I have told, it has not been explored fully. Then complete visualization of evaporation front in superheated water. That means for a larger length from the beginning of the rupture till the end of the test tube. This has also not been reported. Then uh, effect of gravity, particularly everybody has studied it in vertical system. What happens if the system is inclined? Uh, how gravity affects uh, the propagation? That has also not been demonstrated. So with uh, these few, with these few, notions in mind we proceed and this is the experimental setup due to paucity of time i will not uh, explain it uh, uh, to details so this is the liquid uh, chamber where stagnant liquid at different temperature but uh, different desired temperature can be kept this is the vacuum chamber and in between we have got some sort of a rapture mechanism <clears throat> okay and water has been taken for all our experiment water has been taken as the uh, as the uh, working fluid. <clears throat> now, rapture mechanism is very important. And uh, we have seen many of the discrepancies even by the same group of uh, uh, researcher is coming due to the rapture mechanism. 
Uh, one can have some mechanical plunger with the plunger, one can have the rapture, but then uh, there is a restriction in the path and uh, there could be reflection of waves, etc. And then uh, there could be passive system that you make some sort of a pressure difference on both side of the chamber and uh, let's say this is a plastic membrane and it uh, raptures. So, but then this is a passive system and repeatability is very less. So we have gone for a new technique which has not been tried by others. What we have done, we have used some sort of uh, plastic or uh, polyethylene, uh, polyethylene, um, <coughs> polyethylene film uh, <coughs> or membrane. And in that we have put some sort of electrical heater. And uh, this heater is uh, supplied with a very high current and then we could get a good rupture. You can see the rupture. And then we have um, uh, done a number of experiments to uh, find that this is highly repeatable and the pressure difference between both the sides that is also controllable. You can um, set the pressure difference between both the sides. So with these, we have done some experiment and uh, the experiment one has to take care of uh, uh, removing the nucleation site that we have done. And then, of course, one has to record the phenomenon, uh, pressure, temperature, etc. Now, let me tell you one thing. The pressure and temperature recording is very tricky because wherever you have put some sort of a, uh, let's say you put some sort of a probe somewhere, so that will uh, act as a nucleation site. So we have to be very uh, careful regarding putting pressure uh, probe, etc. So we have put some sort of a pressure probe at the bottom and locally we have pulled this thing by ice so that there is no nucleation at the bottom, but we get the pressure. Okay, uh, with this, uh, let us go back. So as the, um, um, as the um, rapture of the film is taking place, our membrane is taking place, there will be uh, wave, wave will come, there will be some sort of reflection and then there will be some other reflection from the bottom that will come to the free surface. Again, some sort of transmission and reflection will take place. So uh, what we will find that we will find that uh, bubbles are appearing at the free surface, they are growing and then propagation is taking place. <clears throat> Here we have got for, gone for a different type of uh, or, or different magnitude of um, uh, different magnitude of uh, superheat. So our saturation temperature was uh, around 10 degree, and we have got different magnitude of superheat. So clearly, clearly one can see that as the um, degree of superheat increases, the propagation speed increases. So this has been, of course, reported by earlier people, but with water, people could not re, um, uh, find this due to the problem of water. And here we could, by a good system design, even for water, we can find this phenomenon. So uh, this is how, of course, uh, from the type of experiment, it, it, it is clear or type of phenomenon is clear that there will be fluctuations. But even then we get a clear trend how the uh, uh, pressing front is propagating. And uh, what is the what is the uh, profile of the free surface? Free surface profile also you see it keeps on changing because uh, nucleation phenomena and uh, phase growth is associated, which are to some extent statistical and random. But a clear trend how the with degree of superheat the uh, propagation uh, velocity or uh, flushing front velocity increases that one can get from here. <clears throat> Next, as we have told uh, that uh, um, people have done only in case of uh, particle system. So here we have got different inclination of the tube. And uh, what we can see, um, if we leave these two, why we should leave these uh, two, five degree, 10 degree, and maybe 30 degree also, because here we can get a very slant kind of interface uh, that creates another phenomena. But for these three, or for these four, 30, 45 degrees, 60 degree, and 90 degree, there is a clear cut um, indication that uh, uh, gravity helps the propagation of uh, 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 this flashing front. Uh, it is to some extent intuition, intuitive because uh, there is a change in, there is a change in, uh, sorry, there is a change in density when there is a, uh, <clears throat> there is a phase change, but, uh, 
so the vapor ejection will be high but at the same time how the vapor uh, get penetrated in the uh, lower part that is not very clear basic mechan mechanism so far it has not been clear different conceptual models are there but uh, here without doubt it um, establishes that uh, gravity helps the propagation of um, the flashing front <clears throat> Now you, we can see two pressure readings we have taken. One is at the top and one is at the bottom. And bottom pressure reading we have to take carefully. So how the pressure changes after um, after uh, a rupture of the uh, membrane that we can see. And then this phenomenon of uh, flashing takes place. So here probably you can get a good view of flashing, how it takes place, how nucleation takes place and gradually it goes below. Now, thing is that, that uh, there is a delay time. Delay time means um, we have seen that uh, the pressure wave reached the, reached the free surface, but there is a delay after that only nucleation has started. So this delay time also we have studied and we have got a relationship uh, with the degree of superheat. But what is the mechanism or what is the reason behind the delay time, how uh, it can be predicted theoretically so far, uh, nobody could give any hint. And we also, uh, we are also trying to find out the answer. We are not yet successful that how the, this is the delay time, how this delay time can be predicted. But it's variation with, uh, it's variation with uh, uh, degree of superheat that we can, uh, that we can see very well. For uh, paucity of time, I am not showing that curve, but uh, with uh, degree as the degree of superheat increases, the delay time decreases. Now, it, is, it has also been seen that there is a threshold superheat. Uh, if uh, we are uh, above the threshold superheat, then propagation of flashing front takes place. If we are uh, close to the threshold of uh, superheat, then there is no propagation of flashing front. Rather, there are nucleation at different uh, orbit location of the bulk of the fluid. So this is what also we can find out or we have observed. Now, uh, one interesting thing is that everybody has reported, earlier many people have reported, and we have also got that as the degree of superheat increases, then this speed of propagation of um, speed of propagation of flashing front increases. But absolute temperature, absolute temperature means the temperature, initial temperature of the fluid. Does it have any, any effect or any influence on flashing front propagation? Here we have conducted one experiment where the degree of superheat in both the cases have been kept same. But in one case, initial temperature is 90 degrees Celsius. In another case, the initial temperature is 60 degrees Celsius. And what we can see that uh, in the first case, the flashing front propagation is uh, quite, I mean, uh, fast. The speed of flashing front propagation is fast compared to the second case. Now, this is repetitive phenomena. We have got it for, by number of experiments, but again, we do not know the reason why it is so. So these, these, these cases, these are fundamental issues probably as far as flashing is concerned. And these cases, one has to relook and do more investigation. <clears throat> Here, uh, another uh, important thing we want to see is the effect of secondary nucleation. Primary nucleation takes place at the top, flashing front, it comes in the downward direction. But if there is a secondary nucleation, what happens? So this shows the primary nucleation front is propagating in the downward direction. There is a secondary nucleation, but primary nucleation front that is made of very small bubbles, uh, whenever there is a secondary nucleation front, there is generally a single bubble that grows and that does not grow in the downward direction, that grows only in the upward direction. Uh, and sometimes it moves, sometimes it is stationary. And its uh, growth is so much that it can push in the primary uh, flashing front in the opposite direction. Then they can mingle and again uh, propagate in the downward direction. So there is also a difference that primary uh, uh, <clears throat> flashing front and secondary flashing front, their uh, phase structures are different. And uh, uh, secondary flashing front, we have seen 
always it is moving in the upward direction and primary flashing front it is moving in the downward direction so again these these are the places where people should do some sort of uh, some sort of uh, <clears throat> research to address this fundamental points so here uh, at the bottom we had some sort of a uh, nucleation site we created some sort of a nucleation site and you can see what happens so you can see the nucleation bubble is coming and then uh, slowly the bubble will grow in size and then one can find out now it is growing in size and then you can see it is probably pushing the top front in the opposite direction making it move up instead of moving downward so at some point it will be also affected the shape has changed so you can see that uh, how uh, secondary nucleation can affect uh, can affect the uh, propagation of the sinc <clears throat> okay now um <clears throat> uh with these i think uh we have got certain new aspects of passing front propagation from experiment and uh, then uh, we are um, then we are uh, <clears throat> also got certain points for which we do not have uh, good answers and then we are going to the numerical um, simulation numerical simulation generally so far what has been done one dimensional um, transient model has been um, has been utilized so we have used a six six equation one dimensional transient model and uh, then uh, uh, this has got three three part hyperbolic part mechanical terms heat and mass transfer terms and then what one has to do uh, this is the boundary condition Uh, at close end we have got reflective boundary condition at uh, open end free surface end we have got transmissive boundary condition and then what one has to do one has to relax different um, <clears throat> entities that means first there is mechanical relaxation then there is uh, your uh, thermo thermodynamic that means thermal and gives gives free energy relax relaxation which is there only in the uh yeah in the flashing zone and with this you can get the flashing front propagation and also you can get the two phase structure now what is new uh, the new thing is that so far nobody has studied the effect of uh, nucleation and we have studied the effect of nucleation on flashing front propagation so for nucleation also we have done some sort of separate model i will not go in de into details of the modeling here there is some sort of a um, some sort of uh, validation with our experiment and theory now with uh, some sort of a tuning particularly plugging in the experimental pressure data uh, and then doing the numerics one can get a we have got a very good agreement between the numerics and the experiment uh so as i have told nobody has studied uh, nucleation um, secondary nucleation effect so that is what we want to study and uh, what we have got this is the paper region this is the liquid region and this is the site of nucleation now here you can see our nucleation site is somewhere over here and then you can see that nucleation site becomes one particular station and uh, between the nucleation site and the bottom of the uh, test tube we can see this pressure fluctuation Uh, time and again it goes in the forward direction and in the backward direction the same thing can be seen here also now uh, as far as uh, mixture density and liquid void fraction is concerned there will be of course this is up to a particular time so up to this time only up to nucleation site there is some sort of a change but beyond the nucleation site there is not much of a change if we increase the time we can see the changes beyond the nucleation site but it is important to see that how the pressure fluctuation and uh, of course this velocity of front fluctuation it has ended earlier so that takes place between the nucleation site and the end of the test tube <clears throat> so what happens it happens like this let's say this is the new uh, secondary nucleation site and uh, this is the primary flashing front and secondary nucleation site grows in size and then uh, it pushes also the primary nucleation front in the upward direction at, and at some point film rupture takes place 
then again, uh, both the front mingles into a single front. Uh, but whereas at the top, we will get a large number of small bubble. In this case, we will get small number of bubbles only. So, uh, but uh, we will get very large volume of bubble. So why this difference? That is also not very clear. In fact, on nucleation, not much, much studies has been done in details. <clears throat> Now uh, here I can show some sort of um, uh, some sort of quantitative match with our experiment. This particular diagram, this is um, this is actually superposition of uh, different figures uh, that shows how the nucleation bubble increases. And from here, what we get that the speed of this bubble is much larger. Secondary nucleation is much larger compared to the primary nucleation. Here also we can see the same thing. The blue curve <clears throat> that is here, there is a small portion of blue curve. This is the speed of the primary nucleation. And this dotted black curve is the speed of the secondary nucleation or secondary phase growth. So secondary phase growth has a much higher velocity compared to the primary phase growth. And when they mingle together, after that, they propagate with a small velocity. There are, of course, fluctuations, etc. So all these features have been seen in our experiment, though one-to-one uh, -one, uh, quantitative correspondence could not be made with this uh, experiment and the, uh, and the, uh, and the uh, numerical result. Because um, experiment what we get, uh, that is for a three-dimensional case for limited length, et cetera, but uh, um, the formulation so far what is followed by the people that has got its limitation. Now here, what we have done, we have taken uh, some three uh, different nucleation sites, uh, 0.3, I believe, 0 0.3, 0 0.5, and 0.7 meter of a total one meter length of the tube. And uh, we can see this phenomenon. I will not explain this. I will go to the, um, I will go to the, Okay, what one can see, let me explain it uh, verbally. So one can see that there are different stations made now uh, between two um, uh, nucleation site and there is uh, again forward and backward propagation of uh, um, propagation of the pressure wave. So uh, what it shows is that the uh, nucleation, secondary nucleation that affects the uh, primary front propagation uh, that uh, primary front propagation also affects the secondary nucleation growth. And then in between nucleation sites also, there are some uh, interaction. Now, such uh, uh, controlled experiment is not, uh, one cannot do such controlled experiment. So it is very difficult to, um, uh, to test this postulates, whatever has been obtained from uh, theory. But uh, some sort of notional thing from the experiment also supports the same thing that if there are two nucleation sites, there is intertalk or rather uh, crosstalk between them. Then major findings and gray areas. The, uh, what we could find that effect of degree of superheat and initial temperature. Initially, nobody could uh, differentiate between these two effects. We can uh, differentiate between these two effects. Then delay time also how it varies, uh, we can find out. But the basic reason of delay time still could not be found. Then rate of depressurization, this is one important thing. Rate of depressurization, how does it, uh, how, uh, does it influence the flushing and flushing front propagation? That, is, uh, that has not been uh, cleared yet. Then, the mechanism of nucleation. I think many of the uh, answers which we are looking for is there in mechanism of uh, nucleation, how the nucleation takes place and how from the nucleation, the transport of the one phase into the second phase, downward transport of the vapor phase into the liquid phase takes place. That is one important aspect which has to be studied. Then effect of secondary nucleation, we have, uh, given much light into it. So far, it has not been studied well, but there are still uh, uh, gray areas why the primary nucleation and secondary nucleation nature are different. Then required future exploration, better visualization to explore the mechanism of flushing front propagation. 
multi-dimensional modeling combined hydrodynamics and thermodynamics. So basically in the one dimensional model, which follows everybody, hydrodynamics does not um, take a good priority, particularly <coughs> wall effect, et cetera, are not being studied properly. So this is one thing has to be done. And then MD simulation, particularly local phenomenon and nucleation, and that can be captured. Uh, I mean, we expect that through MD simulation, that is also one aspect one can see because we have seen that different fluid has got different uh, different uh, <clears throat> uh, response to flushing front. Like retrograde fluid, dodecane, uh, etc. They are very good without any nucleation, uh, secondary nucleation, flushing front propagation is possible. So these are few things which I think that future um, studies can be made. So with this thing, I like to end my presentation. And if there is any question, if that can be taken up within the time, I will be happy to answer. Yep. Thank you, Professor Das, for a very insightful lecture. Um, I am just looking whether there are any questions or not, but uh, we, I think there's some time lag for the questions to come in the question box, but meanwhile, uh, I have a couple of uh, questions. Uh, one is, uh, uh, you have done the experiments uh, with a, a test tube kind of uh, geometry. It is... Uh, Okay, please, please carry on. Yeah, so uh, see on the vapor side, uh, there is uh, uniform pressure, but on the liquid side, there will be a hydraulic you know, pressure gradient. Uh, but suppose instead of a test tube, one does experiment with a flat kind of evaporator. Uh, would you experience a different kind of... Uh, uh, first thing, this is uh, a pertinent question, but uh, the tube height is initially... It was an atmospheric pressure. And uh, then compared to atmospheric pressure, the height of the liquid that will not create so much of um, so much of hydrostatic pressure difference. That is the first point. Of course, there could be hydrostatic pressure difference and long natural circulation loop flushing is seen due to hydrostatic pressure difference. You are correct. In those type of cases, several meters high, let's say 20 meters high loop, etc. So there flushing is seen due to hydrostatic pressure difference. Yeah, so the scale of delta P, uh, I mean, that is much larger than the hydrostatic uh, gradient. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. yeah. Uh, but hydrostatic pressure, as you have correctly pointed out, I have told the uh, example where it will matter. Okay, uh, my other uh, question before I go into the audience question is uh, in the numerical approach, Mm -hmm. uh, do you think a phase field approach might also work? It is some sort of a phase field approach, okay. one dimensional, but it is a phase field approach because I have shown the domain where the uh, change in pressure, temperature is there, small but finite domain. So it is a phase field approach. Okay. Yeah. So we have one question now. Uh, I don't know if you are able to read, but I will read it out in that case. It says uh, from uh, Walker Raza, the question is, is the flashing experiment only one secondary, or in the flashing experiment, only one secondary nucleation is shown? Uh, how is it being controlled? Well, um, actually at the bottom of the test section, we have put some sort of a pressure transducer. So that, in normal case, will create some sort of a some sort of a nucleation site. But when we need nucleation, secondary nucleation, so we are doing that. When we do not need the uh, secondary nucleation, then what we are doing locally, we are pulling it to a very uh, high extent, putting ice, so that from there no nucleation will take place. Thank you. Uh, I don't see any other question. Oh, sir, so Tata, you, if you don't mind, yes. I would like to announce once and we can wait for one or two minutes. Uh, sorry? If you don't mind, I would like to announce once to the audience that they may please type the questions. and we. Can uh, yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Uh, so, dear audience, please. you may please type your question in the Q&A tab that is just below the video. Please type if you have any question there in the tab. 
I should have announced it right in the beginning. Then I think people would have been ready for it. So. There is a question, how is the vacuum maintained with forming continuous flash gas? Yes, this is a very pertinent question. I do not know who has. Oh, Professor, Professor Maya. Maya. Professor Maya, Maya has put, put that question. This is a very pertinent question. So that's why what we do, the vacuum side, we take a very large volume. So that if there is some sort of a vapor generation also, and that vapor comes to the vacuum side, so it is not changing the pressure uh, uh, to a very, I mean, uh, practical uh, aspect. The pressure is remaining almost the same. But this is a very pertinent question. Then there is a question. Uh, some Grace Sudhir. Uh, thank you, sir. My, what might be the methodology for better understand the nucleation site corresponding to flashing? Actually, there are different things we are also thinking that probably some sort of uh, nucleation site, artificial nucleation site. But artificial nucleation site gives also a lot of problem uh, and uh, control. Uh, see, nucleation, many of the cases who are some sort of uh, passively produced surfaces, we do not have much control. As uh, one, one nucleation site, I have given example. So that could be one thing. Another thing is that very high speed um, photography so that uh, early stage of early stage after nucleation we get some sort of information how two nucleuses are forming the of uh, what is my gut feeling that no system whatever we try whatever best we try we can make them totally homogeneous so there will be some sort of heterogeneity and due to this heterogeneity and depending on the disturbance created, from those heterogeneous point, nucleation will be there. So this is my gut feeling. There is one question from Professor Atul Sivastav. Uh, I do not. Yeah, so one nucleation site was generated in the vertical configuration. Could you please share your thoughts if similar nucleation site is provided when the tube is held at different inclinations and possible implications. No, but we can provide different inclination in the nucleation sites. But uh, I do not know, maybe one of them, the first one will uh, act, the second one will not act, or the third one will act before the first one and the second one. So something like that might happen. Something like that might happen. And there are fluid which are not so much, uh, they are to some extent immune to nucleation. In some fluid, even you have to tap by hand to create the uh, flushing front to propagate from the top to bottom. Uh, so maybe in those kind of, those fluid are particularly retrograde type of fluid. Those are uh, hydrocarbon type of fluid. So for those fluid, probably some studies can be made. Water is not a very good uh, candidate. There is another can, question. Yeah, we can take one more question because we are also running out of time. So that is from Sashank Moge. Like in the case of cavitation, are there any pressure waves that occur upon the rapture, uh, rupture of uh, vapor bubbles as the flash front wave propagates? Actually, uh, cavitation occurs in a totally closed system. If we follow the liquid flow path, we can come from high pressure to low pressure and then from low pressure to high pressure again, where the cavitation bubble collapses. High pressure, the cavitation bubble collapses. But in all these experiments, uh, most of the experiments, there is a ruptured end, which is the, which is the low pressure end. And uh, as the phenomenon is ending at the low pressure end, so pressure recovery doesn't take place in case of passing. But these are all nominal thing or notional thing. Passing and cavitation, in my opinion, thermodynamically, they are not different. What is happening downstream, based on that, we try to uh, classify them. But uh, I mean, thermodynamically, they are the same. I mean, depending on your system design, either you can call it flashing or cavitation. Sometimes they are also used synonymously. These two targets. 
yeah i don't know whether we have more time uh, couple of questions are there i may I ask Mon the host monmohan yeah. pande i can see yes shall i read it out yeah i can read uh, in throttling process uh, in capillary tube uh, i have not seen any experiment uh, for throttling process in capillary tube so there also flushing takes place uh, obviously we design capillary tube uh, considering flushing but i have not seen any experiment in that actually we have also an idea we have done some small study that in micro system if flushing is there means micro tube now the phenomenon what we have got let me tell you it is so vigorously vapor is <laughs> expelled out of the tube so we have to think of some control experiment etc before we want i mean before going to some theory we want to see it experimentally yeah the last question is uh, anjan ganguly yeah, what would be the effect if nanoparticles present in the liquid phase even in very low concentration so nanoparticle uh, we have done certain experiment with nanoparticle uh, now nanoparticles are potential sources of nucleation so in the bulk you will get nuclear uh, so i mean it is not non intuitive what will happen that is not non intuitive <clears throat> yeah so i think there are no other questions uh, we would like to thank professor das again for the inspiring and insightful lecture uh, then uh, okay so we can now i can turn to the organizers to make any announcements yes sir thank you professor das thank you professor datta for sharing the session thank you thank you thank you so, who come in and got the questions thanks to those delegates so the audience can go to the oral sessions now they will start at 11 o'clock as per the schedule